What's up? I'm Chopper Shoot. Welcome to this No BS Guide for Optimizing Black Ops 6 Warzone Season 1. So without further ado, let's get into it. This video is not going to cover optimizing Windows at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find multiple useful guides I'd recommend you check out. This video is only going to cover the in-game options. And keeping on par with being a No BS Guide, if you've already followed my Black Ops 6 optimization, well, congratulations, most of your settings are already set and saved. You don't necessarily need to watch this video. but if you want to optimize your game for the best settings, let's get into it. Start by heading into Black Ops 6 Warzone, then clicking Options in the top right, followed by Graphics. On the Display tab, we'll quickly run through the settings here. Display Mode, set this to Full Screen Borderless if you like tabbing out, otherwise Full Screen Exclusive for the best performance on most systems. Then if you have it set to Exclusive Full Screen, you can change your refresh rate and resolution. Make sure these both match your monitor to get the most out of your system. Restart Shaders Preloading, I'd recommend and you come back after finishing this optimization guide and click this here to make sure everything's fresh with your new settings. Scrolling down, gamma and brightness completely your preference, but just keep in mind if you push this too far, the game starts to get super washed out, so if you can, adjust your settings on your monitor. Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, if you have an Nvidia GPU, definitely turn this on. If you have a much higher powered GPU and a lower powered CPU, set this to on plus boost. Then scrolling down, sustainability, and we'll start with VSync. Gameplay, turn this off unless you're getting screen tearing while in game and vsync menus you can leave it whatever expanding the custom frame rate option here you can limit your fps for more consistent frame pacing input latency etc usually want to cap your fps to a little bit below the average of what you're getting in game just to leave a tiny bit of headroom on your system if you're recording streaming or watching youtube videos and those are stuttering or lagging cap your frames to quite a bit lower than what you're actually getting in game these are entirely your preference though reduce menu render resolution i'd usually recommend this Keep your PC cooler on the menu so that you have more headroom in-game, especially if you're thermal throttled on a laptop. If you see that the main menu looks really crusty, change this from optimal to maximal in order to fix that crustiness. Pause game rendering pauses rendering when you're tabbed out. Personally, I don't mind this. I leave it off. Reduce quality. You can leave it at whatever. And finally, focused mode only affects you if you have extended window selected at the very top, but I wouldn't recommend that. Finally, HDR is entirely your preference. If you have an HDR display, definitely turn it on. Things are going to look a lot better. Then the quality tab. Starting off at the very top, graphics preset. Set this from custom down to minimum. Then upscaling slash sharpening, I'd recommend choosing either FSR 3 or DLSS. Both of these are going to render your game at a smaller resolution. Use AI magic to upscale it and give you way more FPS. If you're getting enough FPS at native resolution or you want a crispier looking game, set this to Find Fidelity FX CAS for a much sharper experience. For those who want more frames, FSR 3 and DLSS are the way to go. You can choose FSR 3 on any GPU and you can only choose DLSS on NVIDIA GPUs, so keep that in mind. With either of these selected, you'll have a quality preset here. I'd recommend choosing quality or as high quality as you can go. The more to the performance side you push it, the smaller window your game renders at, the more AI has to work to crank it up to full screen, and it's going to give you weird artifacts and glitches, which can definitely take away from the competitive edge. Then the sharpness is entirely your preference. NVIDIA DLSS frame generation, or any frame generation for that matter, should never be used in a competitive game like Black Ops 6 or Warzone. It's going to give you extra input latency, and it's just not worth it. Leave it off. VRAM scale target. You can leave it at 80% or you can raise it up depending on what kind of graphics card you have. You may see a negative effect from moving it up, but for me, there's not really a negative difference. It might even be positive. And finally, variable rate shading. If you're not using upscaling, definitely turn this on. Scrolling down to details and textures. I'd recommend cranking up your texture resolution as high as you can go without maxing out your VRAM in the bottom right. Essentially, raising your texture quality is going to give you a huge boost in visual quality in game with absolutely no performance hit, especially if you're nowhere close to your VRAM maximum. Set this option according to your target in the bottom right. Then texture filter anisotropic. This anisotropic filtering is going to give you a slightly better look for most textures in the game and it's a super cheap effect. I recommend leaving this all the way up on high or ultra. It's just going to slightly improve how things look with very little performance impact. Then from here scrolling down pretty much everything else you'll leave at the lowest possible setting so shadow and lighting and the same goes for environment down here. As this is a competitive shooter, you're going to want the best performance and leaving everything down as low as possible is going to get you there. If you have a much more powerful system, then feel free to crank up pretty much whatever you'd like. Shadow and lighting is probably going to have the biggest visual impact, so keep that in mind. 
Then finally, the view tab at the very top. We'll apply our changes here, confirm, and view tab. Field of view is entirely your preference. At the very top, I'd recommend turning on the motion reduction preset if you get motion sickness. Otherwise, you can customize your field of view, set this to whatever you want while it technically affects performance. Your gameplay experience is infinitely more valuable than higher FPS. The same goes for ADS field of view and all these other personal preference slash taste options here. Then scrolling down to camera, world motion blur, always have this turned off. Weapon motion blur, however, is your preference. First person and third person camera movement, have this set to least for a competitive edge. And if you wish, inverted flashbang. You may think your game's crashing the first time you get flashed, but personally I just like a darker screen rather than going blind in person. Now let's head over to the audio tab on the far left. Inside of here, I'd recommend turning down your gameplay music to zero and cinematic music to zero as well. Then scrolling down to global here, audio mix, this is your audio dynamic range, as in the difference between the quiet and the loud sounds in game. So footsteps and explosions. You want explosions to be as quiet as possible and footsteps to be louder. Therefore, you want a tighter dynamic range. I'd recommend choosing headphones, headphones bass boost or headphones bass cut based on whatever you prefer or for the biggest competitive edge, sucker punch. It'll make footsteps the loudest and explosions the quietest. Scrolling down and recommend at the very bottom turning on reduced tinnitus sound. It's going to make life a lot better. Now that we're done with optimizing the game for the most part, head back to the graphics tab, then display at the very top and we'll restart our shaders preloading. Once this is done, then congratulations, you're mostly optimized. If you're not comfortable playing around with config files, then that's pretty much it. However, if you want a pretty substantial performance boost, close out of your game now. All right, so whatever plan from your on Steam, Xbox, Game Pass, etc., your settings file should be in plus minus the same place. Hit Start and E or the Windows key and E to bring up a new file browser. Head across to the Documents tab, followed by Call of Duty and inside of here, Players. Now inside of here, you may see thousands of files or just a handful. All of the Call of Duty options are saved to this particular folder. You're looking for S10 COD24.txt. This is the settings file for Black Ops 6 and Black Ops 6 Warzone. If you have it on a different platform, it may be inside of a folder, so you'll need to dig around a bit. Anyways, S10 COD24.txt. Open this with any text editor, like Notepad, for example. What we'll do in here is hit Control F to search and search for Renderer. As such, hit Enter and you'll jump straight down to Renderer Worker Count. Essentially, we'll set this to the number of cores in our system minus one. If you have performance and efficiency cores, set it to the number of performance cores minus one. To find out what you have, hit Control Shift and Escape at the same time to bring up your task manager. On the performance tab, head across to CPU and in here, you'll find at the very bottom, the number of cores that you have in your system. And if you don't have efficiency cores, then this is the number that you're looking for. Take the number that's here, for example, eight, and we'll type in eight minus one, so seven. That's it. Render a work account, seven. However, if you have efficiency cores, then you're gonna have to Google what kind of CPU you have, which you'll see in the top right. So Googling i9-13900K, you can see that I have eight performance cores. So I'll take the number eight and minus one from it. Again, that's seven, save, and we're done. That's it. Now, if you have efficiency cores, you may actually have slightly better performance by using all of your cores. So instead of minusing one, you'll leave it as just eight or whatever number it is, though you'll have to test for yourself to see what you get on your system. It'll also depend on how many things are running in the background, browsers, etc. Now, if you'd like to do a little bit more in here, something that I didn't mention in the previous video that's popped up relatively recently is searching for GPU upload heaps, one word. This option over here messes with resizable bar, which is essentially how things get loaded into your VRAM. If you have all of your settings cranked down to the lowest possible setting, changing this from true to false may actually give you a slight performance boost, but you'll need to play around with it and test it yourself on your particular system. If you have things cranked all the way up and you're playing at 4K, leave this set at true. Then for just cleaning up the game visually and possibly getting a tiny bit of performance, you can search for, you'll find all of these below, corpse limit, you can set this down to zero for less corpses lying around, blood limit, you can set this from false to true to lower the amount of blood all over the place, blood limit interval, you can set to the max of 2000, searching for show blood, you can turn this off completely by typing in false, then right below it, eject weapon brass, you can change this to false as well, if you wish, corpse culling threshold is how quickly old corpses are deleted. You can change this from 
5 to 0.5, just copy the option from the right, reflection probe relighting, lower this to 1, static sun shadow clip map resolution, lower this from 1024 down to 0, enable velocity based blur, you can set this to false for, I assume, slightly less blur when someone's running around, and subdivision level, you can set this down to 0 as well. Then finally, virtual texturing memory mode, you can change this from large to something else like copying extra small, pasting it in, there we go. Now, most of these settings here may have practically no effect on the game, like getting rid of bullet casings, but some of them clear up the game visually, some of them possibly have a slight performance impact, like the number of reflections getting certain amounts of lighting, etc. You can do some of these, all of these, or none of these if you wish, your preference. And with that, I'll save this file, close it, and we'll head back into the game for a couple more quick tips. Now that we're back in game, head across to settings once more, followed by interface this time, and on the global tab, make sure skip introduction movie is turned on. Then at the very bottom, telemetry, I'd recommend showing more and enabling FPS counter, server latency, and packet loss. All three of these will give you useful information while you're playing the game in the top left up here. Anyways, that's really it for this quick optimization guide. Hopefully you found it interesting, if not helpful. And of course, if you were subscribed from the previous video, hey, you just got an extra bonus tip with the configuration file. Let me know if it made a big difference for you. That's really it. Thank you for watching. Mine has been Troubleshoot. Again, more optimization guides down below. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.